Hello everyone, Interact back with another episode of Entity Education. In this episode, we're going to be covering the killer of choice for former Call of Duty professionals, Anna, probably better known as the Huntress. As always, I'll have timestamps up on the screen right now, and down in the description if you want to skip around to certain parts of the video. Now let's get started where we normally do, with Anna's base stats. She has the slower killer movement speed of 110%, or 4.4 meters per second. She also has a base terror radius of 20 meters. Wow, that's really small, you might be saying. Well, unfortunately, she also has a humming that she makes at a distance from the edge of her 20 meter terror radius up to a grand total of 45 meters. So she basically has a 45 meter terror radius, but terror radius perks only work up to 20 meters. It's a little weird, I know. Just know that any perk that will lower your terror radius, such as Monitor and Abuse or Insidious, will only actually reduce the 20 meter portion of your terror radius. They won't affect your humming distance at all. You'll still be humming up to 45 meters. Now let's talk about Anna's power, her hunting hatchets. She's one of the few killers in the game that has a power that isn't even remotely magical or mystical in any way, shape, or form. She just has hatchets that she throws at survivors. You start off each match with a baseline of 5 hatchets held in your... I'm gonna say belt? I'm not exactly sure where she stores them, I'm fairly certain it's her belt, I just don't know if that has some kind of special name. Once you run out of hatchets, which you're going to do, you're going to have to go find a locker to refill at. Refilling at a locker will take 4 seconds by default to do, and once you do start the animation, you are stuck in it until it finishes. No cancelling early because you spotted someone running by you. Now let's get into the nitty gritty and some numbers of how hatchets work. You hold down the mouse 2 button, or whatever it happens to be on console, to start winding up your hatchet throw. During this wind up animation, you'll be slowed down to a nice snail's pace of 78.5% or 3.14 meters per second. Once you finish the animation, you can let go of mouse 2 to throw the hatchet. You are also able to press mouse 1 again once the wind-up animation is finished at any point during holding a hatchet out to cancel the animation, making Anna put her hatchet away, and also slowing you down. If you continue to hold mouse 2, however, you will charge up your hatchet throw, making it move faster, farther, and at less of a harsh angle towards the ground. Once you're fully charged up, you and everyone near to you will hear a slight metallic sheen sound, and your hatchet will also have a nice shine on it, letting you and everyone around you know that you have a hatchet fully charged up. You can then decide to let go of mouse 2 at the best time to hit a survivor with the hatchet, or you could just literally hold it for the rest of the match if you really feel like it, I guess. Now let's get into some of the hard numbers for Anna's hatchets. I tested these myself, and everything was pretty much within an acceptable margin of error, as well as being tested multiple times just to make sure there was less chance of human error skewing the numbers or giving me false results. As a note, all testing happened in April of 2019 on the 2.6.3 patch, so if you're watching this video in the future, first of all, hello, and secondly, things may be different, I'm not sure, I'm not an oracle. If you simply tap the mouse 2 button to throw a hatchet, it will take 1.25 seconds, or roughly 1 second and change if you'd prefer that, to pull out the hatchet and throw it. If you want to hold the hatchet until it is fully charged, you're going to need to hold M2 for about 3 seconds before you'll hear the metallic sheen sound effect and see the hatchet have a shine on it. After throwing a hatchet, fully charged or otherwise, you will have a cooldown period of 2 seconds where you'll be unable to attack or throw another hatchet. You can still move around, however. You will also be unable to vault windows, break pallets, all that other cooldown nonsense that they give to killers, much like Billy. Hatchets have a decently large hitbox, both vertically and horizontally, and when they hit a survivor, it will deal one point of damage like a normal melee hit would, taking them from healthy to injured or injured to downed. They will travel in a parabolic arc like all ballistics do, with the arc getting less and less harsh the more you wind the hatchet up. The more you wind the hatchet up, it will also begin to move faster and faster until it reaches that metallic sheen, in which case they are fully wound up and that is the farthest you will be able to throw it and the fastest you will be able to throw it. Essentially, at little to no windup, they will go a short distance but have more of an arc to them, making you able to throw them over objects easier, and at a higher maximum windup, they will travel pretty much in a straight line, 
making you able to hit things at a distance easier, since they'll move faster as well. But we'll cover more about how to use hatchets in the how to play section of the video a little later on. For now, let's get started with the add-ons for the Huntress. Before we start, I just want to say that I don't speak Russian, and honestly I can barely pronounce some things in English properly, so if I butcher the pronunciations on anything that it happens to be a foreign word, just please forgive me. Most of Anna's add-ons are fairly easy to understand, so we'll just kinda get through them quickly. Starting off in the comments here, we have a very basic add-on, Coarse Stone. Coarse Stone will make it so any survivor hit by your hatchets will suffer from the hemorrhage status effect for 30 seconds. That's it. Next up, we have another basic add-on, but one that is actually insanely powerful due to a previous patch in the game, Barris. Beirus Toxin? Barris? Beirus? I call it Barris. Barris Toxin will make it so any survivor hit by your hatchets will suffer from the exhausted status effect for 30 seconds. This is honestly one of her best add-ons, since it counters basically every exhaustion perk except for Sprint Burst or Adrenaline if you even count Adrenaline as an exhaustion perk. Following that, we have Bandaged Haft. This will slightly reduce the cooldown time between your hatchet throws. This means a 10% reduction in cooldown time between hatchet throws, bringing you down to a cooldown of 1.8 seconds. And her final common add-on, which I'm going to absolutely butcher the name of, is Amanita, Am 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 Amanita Toxin? I probably said that wrong, but who cares? This add-on is basically the most filler of filler add-ons. It will make any survivor hit by your hatchets suffer from the blindness status effect for 30 seconds, which is basically meaningless. Moving on to the Huntress's uncommon add-ons, we start off with U Seed Brew. U Seed Brew will make any survivor hit by your hatchet suffer from the hindered status effect for 15 seconds. As a reminder, or in case you weren't aware, hindered makes survivors run at only 85% of their normal 100% speed essentially slowing them down by 15% when they're sprinting, making this a pretty potent add-on. Next up, we have Shiny Pin, which will moderately increase your movement speed during your wind-up animation. This means a 5% to your movement speed in the wind-up animation, bringing you up to a still fairly horrible 83.5% or 3.34 meters per second. Following that, we have another Haft add-on with Oak Haft, this will moderately reduce the cooldown time between hatchet throws. This means a 20% reduction in cooldown time between your hatchet throws, bringing you down to a cooldown of 1.6 seconds. Next up, we have Mana Grass Braid, which will moderately decrease your hatchet wind-up time. This means an 8% reduction in your wind-up time, making it take 1.13 seconds to throw a hatchet by simply tapping mouse 2 and 2.76 seconds to fully wind up your hatchet. Following up on that, we have a nice easy to understand add-on, Leather Loop. Leather Loop will start you off with an additional hatchet and allow you to hold an additional hatchet at any given time in a match, making your maximum hatchets held six. Next up, we have Fine Stone, which will make any survivor hit by your hatchets suffer from the hemorrhage status effect for 60 seconds. And the final uncommon add-on for Anna is Deer Skin Gloves. These will moderately reduce the time it takes you to reload your hatchets at lockers. This means a 20% reduction in locker refill time, bringing you down to 3.2 seconds to reload your hatchets at a locker. A quick note here, it does say does not stack on Deer Skin Gloves, but it does in fact stack with Iron Maiden. I tested this, and you might be thinking, Oh my goodness, 70% faster refill times at, at lockers? And wh why is everybody not running this? But calm down there, little Timmy. Sadly, Iron Maiden only makes you refill 30% faster. At rank 3, yes, I tested this, it's kind of my thing, remember? And for some odd reason, Iron Maiden and Deerskin Gloves stack multiplicatively instead of additively, despite basically everything in this game stacking additively. This means with both Deerskin Gloves and Iron Maiden equipped, you will only be refilling your hatchets at lockers 44% faster, making it take 2.25 seconds, which is still pretty nice, but nowhere near the insane 1.2 seconds that it would be if it were 70%. Now moving on to Anna's rare add-ons, we start with an upgraded add-on, U-Seed Concoction. This will make survivors hit by your hatchets suffer from the hindered status effect for 30 seconds. 
Once again, this means they will run at 85% speed instead of 100% speed. Next up, we have the big boy exhaustion add-on, Venomous Concoction. This will make survivors hit by your hatchets suffer from exhaustion for 90 seconds. Honestly, with the exhaustion nerf a while back, Barris Toxin works well enough that this add-on is kind of redundant, but it is more time if you really need it. Following that, we have Rusty Head. Rusty Head will make survivors hit by your hatchets suffer from the mangled status effect for 120 seconds. Once again, as I've stated before in previous videos, considerably is actually a worthless word when it comes to mangled. You either are or are not mangled. There aren't any really degrees to being mangled in this game. I still don't know why they put that there. Who knows? Next up, we have an add-on that I actively hate, Pungent File. Why it's spelled that way, I don't know. Pungent File, vile, file will make it so you can see the aura of any locker within 36 meters of you. Why do I hate this add-on, you might be wondering. Well, I hate this add-on because it makes your screen so goddamn busy on certain tiles of maps. Because you'll just see all these hatchets floating around knowing where lockers are. It's not worth anything. And you already get this effect when you run out of hatchets. It might not be at 36 meters, I believe it's only like 24. But why would you ever run this nonsense? I I'm gonna stop rambling now. And Anna's final rare add-on is Flower Babushka reminding us of the fact that Anna is actually Russian. Flower Babushka will considerably reduce the wind-up time of your hatchets. This means a 12% reduction in your wind-up time, making it take 1.1 second to throw a hatchet by tapping M2, and 2.64 seconds to fully wind up your hatchets. Moving on to Anna's very rare add-ons, we start off with Infantry Belt. Infantry Belt will make you start with two extra hatchets, and your maximum carried amount will be increased by two, giving you a base of seven hatchets in any match. Next up, we have kind of a dubious add-on, Glowing Concoction. Glowing Concoction will make it so any survivor hit by your hatchet will have their aura revealed to you for five seconds. Why do you need to see the aura of something that you already can probably see with your eyes since you hit them with a hatchet? Who knows? And Anna's final very rare add-on is Begrimed Head. Begrimed Head will make any survivor hit by your hatchet not only suffer from the mangled status effect for 120 seconds, but also moderately decrease their repair speed. Moderately decreased repair speed means a 5% penalty to their repair speed, and this will last for 120 seconds as well, regardless of whether or not they get healed. And Anna's final add-on, and her only ultra-rare, is the much-dreaded Iridescent Head. Iridescent Head, if you already haven't been blessed or cursed depending on how you look at it, to witness it, will make it so that any hatchet you hit a survivor with will instantly down them, at the cost of reducing your maximum amount of hatchets held by four, giving you a single hatchet to throw baseline. Problem comes in when you realize that this can be combined with the add-on Infantry Belt, but we'll cover that build in the that build section a little later on. Now let's get into some tips for playing Anna the Huntress. As with most of the high skill ceiling killers, such as the nurse, practice and patience are going to be your best friends when playing Huntress. Also, some of these tips may be essentially shortened down versions of tips from Scott Jund or Damn No HTML's Ultimate Huntress Guide that was posted about almost a year ago as of the making of this video and most of the tips there still stand. If you want to check that video out, there will be a link down in the description. Scott is pretty much one of the better Huntress players in the game, if not in, you know, the top best Huntress players in the game. Watching him and Umberbug is pretty much how I learned to play Huntress for the most part, and I felt it would be disingenuous of me not to mention his video and put a link to it since it pretty much taught me how to play Huntress. Some of the things covered in this section may not be things that you have gone over, but as I said, I learned from watching him and Umberblug play. I'll put a link to her channel in the description as well if you want to watch her play. She's probably the best Huntress player that I know of, and also the reason I can't call myself the best Huntress player in my area. Not that I'm salty or anything. Let's start off with something that might be a little controversial to say. You may want to get a crosshair on your screen to help you learn how to land hatchets a lot easier. Some graphics cards and even monitors come with the ability to do this built into them, so I won't really go into details on how you should do it, 
because I don't know your PC specs. You can honestly just Google it if you want to. It's kind of a gray area as to whether this is allowed or not by behavior. I don't believe it's a bannable offense since you could literally just put a piece of tape in the middle of your monitor and they can't detect that, but it's probably kind of frowned upon. One of the major things you're going to want to learn is the hitboxes for both survivors and basically every object in the entire world on every map. Knowing where you can and can't throw a hatchet will be invaluable when it comes to playing the Huntress. For the most part, hitboxes make sense. If you see a gap between hay bales, for instance, you can throw through it and possibly get the hatchet to land. But there are certain things, especially car models and barrels, that have kind of wonky hitboxes. Knowing what has a good, well-defined hitbox and what has a wonkier hitbox will help you out a lot when it comes to playing Huntress. This isn't really something I'm going to go into detail about, since I'm not going to talk about the hitbox of every single object in this game, since the video would be like 70 hours long. You'll get a feel for it after you've played Huntress a lot. Now getting into more specific things that make the Huntress great, and things you're going to want to get a feel for. The most obvious thing that makes the Huntress strong is the fact that she has a ranged attack, which no other killer except for the Plague does. As I said earlier, the more you wind up your hatchets, the farther and faster they will go, and also they will have less of a steep angle towards the ground. This means that you can pretty much snipe survivors across the map, whether it be off of a generator, just you see them in the open, they're trying to unhook someone, they're trying to cleanse a totem, etc. As long as you're aiming properly and you have a feel for the arc of your hatchets. This also extends to being able to defend downed survivors, leading me nicely into my next point. The Huntress has a really, really disgusting slugging game. As long as you understand when to slug properly, hint, it isn't all the damn time like some people seem to think, you can seriously snowball quickly with the Huntress. I'd probably have to make an entire video about slugging and when to do it, when not to do it, to really do it justice, but I'll just go over it kind of briefly and quickly. If you have another objective readily available for you to defend, you should probably just leave the survivor on the ground and slug them. This means if you walk up to a generator with two injured survivors on it, and you land a hatchet throw on one of them downing them, you're going to want to leave them on the ground and go quickly chase and down the other survivor. If you're in the middle of nowhere after chasing a survivor for a while, and you have no idea whatsoever where any other survivor is, pick them up and hook them. I know this is a gross oversimplification of slugging, but as I said, I'd have to make an entire video about slugging. This video is mostly just about the Huntress, who excels at slugging. Another thing the Huntress can excel at is pallet loops. Despite being a slower killer, moving at only the 110% speed, since you have a ranged attack, as long as loops don't have extremely high walls, such as trees or rocks or stacks of hay bales, you can typically throw over a loop and basically just ignore it altogether. This also extends to loops that have long straight portions to them, which kind of transitions me nicely into something we should cover next, survivors juking your hatchets. Obviously, in an ideal world, for any Huntress player at least, survivors would just run in straight lines like really poorly programmed bots. Sadly, survivors are human beings, so above basically rank 20, they're probably going to be trying to juke your hatchets. How they'll be juking your hatchets really comes down to the individual survivor, but the most common tactics I've seen are running serpentine patterns in the open, trying to break line of sight as frequently as possible, or just straight up running erratically. Let's go over how to counter each of these point by point, but honestly, for the most part, it all just comes down to being patient. If survivors are running serpentine patterns, basically, they're going to be doing it almost rhythmically. You may have to watch them for a while to really get their rhythm down. But what this means is they're going to have a point at which they're going to turn around to move the other direction. Once you find that point, get your hatchet readied and good to go, wait for them to get to that turn back around point, and then just nail them with the hatchet. You're going to want to lead them a little bit, and you're going to want to wait for them to run into your hatched crosshairs, instead of trying too hard to, you know, follow them back and forth and back and forth. Just let them come into your sights. Let them come into your hatchet throw, and then hit them with it. Do not try and do it the other way around. You will end up missing if survivors are running places mostly just to break line of sight, then probably they're not running to really good pallet or window loops. This means, for the most part, unless they are at a good pallet or window loop, 
you can just patiently follow behind them and wait until they run into a very open area and then hit them with a the hatchet. You may have to do some mind gaming if they're running around like a really large rock or something where there isn't necessarily a pallet, but since you do move slower, they can sort of loop it. But just be patient. You might need to double back on them a few times, hide your red stain, but if you, as long as you're patient, they will eventually run into you and you can nail them in the face with a hatchet. If you run into a survivor who seems to be running erratically, the best thing you can do is attempt to figure out what it is exactly that they're doing. I know that may not seem like it makes any sense to you, but keep in mind that they are a human player, and humans are, for some reason, drawn to patterns. It may seem like erratic nonsense at first glance, but if you keep watching them, I'm sure you'll find that they're just doing a pattern that looks like nonsense, but really isn't. This is probably one of the harder things to counter, but most people don't really attempt it since it's more intensive and doing a combo of just like serpentining or running loops really well at strong loops is pretty much the best way to not get hit by hatchet anyways. The hatchet throw that you're probably going to find yourself most frequently running into is melee hatchet throws. It may be tempting to only use your power at range, but using it in melee is actually better since it has a less punishing cooldown period than just a normal M1. This is probably where you're going to be seeing the most erratic behavior out of survivors, since they're going to be panicking because you're literally right behind them. But once again, if you're patient, you will find your window to land your hatchet. Once again, letting survivors come into your crosshairs is going to be your best bet for landing melee hatchets, since if they're, say, spinning around you, eventually they're going to end up right in front of you, and that's when you want to nail them with the hatchet. You could try following them to land a flick shot or something, but it's honestly probably not worth it unless you're extremely confident in your ability to flick to a certain area and hit them. If you've been playing 7 billion years of CSGO, go for the flick shots, but unless you're Shroud, you're probably just going to let them come into your sights. Now once you've landed your melee hatchet throw, you can either walk up slowly and mouse one them, or hit them with another hatchet if they do use their speed boost to gain a lot of distance by running in a straight line. This, like basically everything I'm, I've said so far and will continue to say, comes down to patience and discipline. Knowing which is going to be your best option is really something that you'll get a feel for after playing the Huntress for a while. Obviously, if they run into a rock and waste all their speed boost, just M1 them. If they run in a straight line in the open, throw a hatchet. But there are going to be more cases than just those two that you'll have to get a feel for. There is a lot of metagaming that goes into playing Huntress at higher ranks, especially at pallet loops. For the most part, survivors who have played against Huntress enough won't be dropping a pallet if you already have a hatchet wound up. This means they'll either just keep running the pallet, wasting a lot of your time since you have to slow down to put your hatchet away to continue the loop. They may end up just dropping it when you're behind an obstacle, meaning that you can't land the hatchet, which will force you to walk up and break the pallet and continue on with the next loop or continue attempting that loop if you think you can land another hatchet throw, but this will be wasting your time. Sometimes this can work in your favor, however, since it means you might be able to mind game them into just letting you swing through the pallet with a basic M1 if they think that they can greedily get another loop out of it. If they do end up throwing down a pallet when you have a hatchet wound up, as long as you catch them mid pallet drop animation, you can just throw it straight on and it will hit them. If you don't catch them mid animation, you're a little late to it, you're going to need to predict whether they're going to go left, right, or straight. This isn't really something I can teach, but typically they'll be going in whichever direction is the quote unquote safer direction, meaning it has another pallet or window loop that they can use. These are really just some tips that I can give you. A lot of Huntress comes down to honestly just knowing by muscle memory how our hatchets work, how they arc, how far they can go, how long it takes to wind up with whatever add-ons you're using, how each specific survivor in your match is going to react to you throwing hatchets at them, etc. This isn't something I could really go over, uh, even if I were the best Huntress in my area. Once again, I'm not salty about Umberbug at all, I swear. These are just things that you'll have to pick up from playing Huntress a lot. So just practice, be patient, and eventually you'll start to see results and get better and better at Huntress, and you'll start getting more and more consistent with your hatchet throws and winning more frequently. Now let's get into the teachable perks that you'll be unlocking if you put blood points into Anna, and also have a nice laugh at how absolutely horrible they are. At level 30, you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Beast of Prey. Beast of Prey will make it so once you gain Bloodlust 1, 
so after you've been in a chase for 15 seconds, you will lose your red stain, and it will remain hidden until you lose bloodlust, either by losing the chase, breaking a pallet, or being stunned by a pallet. It will also give you 30 slash 40 slash 50% more blood points in the hunter category. This perk is laughably bad, and given that it used to be even worse and they buffed it, it's really saying something about how just atrocious this perk is, and how atrocious it used to be. At level 35, you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Territorial Imperative. Territorial Imperative will reveal a survivor's aura to you for 3 seconds when they enter the basement and you are more than 32 meters away from the basement entrance. It has a cooldown of 60 slash 45 slash 30 seconds. Why would you ever run this perk, you may wonder? I'm sure even Behavior wonders the same exact thing. And finally, at level 40, you'll unlock the teachable for the perk Huntress Lullaby. Hex Huntress Lullaby, which I'm probably going to say wrong at some point because for some reason I think it's Huntress's Lullaby, I just get over it, will obviously make a totem into a hex totem since it is a hex perk. Every time you hook a survivor, you will gain a token up to a maximum of 5 tokens. From 1 to 4 tokens, the time between the skill check showing up on the screen of the survivor and the skill check sound warning playing for them will become shorter and at 5 tokens, there will no longer be any sound warning for any skill check. Basically, it subtracts 20% from the warning's base time per token, meaning that there will be a larger gap between a notable ping and the skill check showing up on their screen, making it harder for them to do it if they're not paying attention, I guess. It will also make survivors receive an extra 2-4-6% regression penalty when missing any skill check. This perk is probably the Huntress's best perk, and honestly, considering it's not that great anyways, goes to show just how laughably horrible all of her other perks are. Now let's get into the perk builds section for the Huntress. As always, I'll start off with a build assuming you've only put points into Anna, and therefore only have her perks and the base killer perks, and then move on to a meta build assuming that you have every perk in the game unlocked, and then a few suggestions for other perks you could run, then we'll talk about that build, and then we'll discuss a few meme builds to round it out at the end. Let's start off with the new player build. You might run a build that looks something like this. Bitter Murmur, Whispers, Sloppy Butcher, and Spies from the Shadows. I never thought I'd seriously be suggesting running Spies from the Shadows, but what can I say, Behavior actually did a decent job of buffing it into a decently okay kind of perk. Basically, every perk here, except for Sloppy Butcher, is just to augment your ability to track down survivors, so you can hit them with your hatchets or your big axe and get them downed as quickly as possible. As long as you've been practicing your hatchet throws and chases, you shouldn't really have any issues with getting survivors downed and then throwing them on hooks or slugging them when necessary. Sloppy Butcher is just to help slow down the game a slight amount and does apply on your basic axe swings as well as on your hatchets, which can be kind of nice since you can apply it at range. Bitter Murmur will give you the auras of survivors who have just finished generators and also at the end of the game, so maybe you can land some nice cross-map hatchet snipes. Whispers is basically just unrivaled in its ability to track, since it tells you where survivors are and where they are not, saving you a lot of time. And Spies from the Shadows is basically just a filler tracking perk to help in case Bitter Murmur and Whispers aren't enough for some reason, since you don't really have much to choose from since most base killer perks are God awful, and Anna's own perks are also really, really awful. Now let's move on to the meta build for the Huntress, and then give a few suggestions for other perks you might want to consider. The meta build for the Huntress is typically Barbecue and Chili, Hex Ruin, Whispers, and a Nurse's Calling. This is basically just a strictly upgraded version of the new player build. Barbecue will give you auras for those montage worthy cross map snipes after hooking a survivor, and who doesn't love extra blood points? Hex Ruin is basically the best perk in the game for slowing down generator progression as long as it stays up and active, and Whispers and Nurses give you the best tracking in the game. A few other perks you might want to consider running might be Discordance, which can give you an idea of where survivors are working together on generators, and maybe you can take a wild guess on which position they're on and grab some of those beautiful cross-map snipes. Iron Maiden is one that I've seen Huntress players running after it came out, since it does in fact make your reload animation that 30% faster, which can be pretty nice. The whole exposed thing and 
them shouting thing probably isn't going to factor in very much, since most survivors against Huntress don't even bother trying to hide in lockers, because if you end up walking up to it just to reload, you might just end up with a free hook instead of extra hatchets. Sloppy Butcher, as I said, does in fact apply on your hatchet hits as well, so you can use it to slow down the game if you don't like the unreliability of Hex Ruin. And you could also run Shadowborn if you're Umberbug, because she hates the base FOV of Dead by Daylight. But seriously, go follow her on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Umbra underscore bug. She's an amazing Huntress player, even if her playing DBD and playing Huntress makes me unable to claim to be the best in my area. Not salty or anything, I swear. Now let's discuss that build. Now what is that build for the Huntress, you might be wondering? She doesn't have anything nearly as bad as the hostage dock that she covered in the previous episode, does she? Oh, my poor, naive new friend. That build for the Huntress is the Eerie Head build. You bring basically whatever perks you want, and then the add-ons Iridescent Head and Infantry Belt, giving you three insta-down hatchets instead of the one that you should be getting from Iridescent Head being used. This build is one of the ones that is probably the least of a that build build, since it's technically all in the game, it's all kosher, it doesn't break any rules or anything, but it just isn't fun to play against which is why I'm throwing it in the same category of being a that build like Hostage Doc was. I'll keep discussing that builds in the future videos for killers if they have a build toxic enough to warrant talking about. As always, a disclaimer, I talk about these builds just to bring attention to them and to make people aware of them, not to encourage people running them. The entire point of this section of these videos is just to highlight that these builds suck all of the fun out of Dead by Daylight, and at the end of the day, we should be playing video games to have fun, not to be as toxic as possible and make other people's fun not exist. Please don't run this build, it's really, really unfun. Now for some things that are fun, let's move on to some meme builds for the Huntress. There really aren't that many since most of the meme builds in the game revolve around add-ons, and most of her add-ons are extremely bland when it comes to actually changing up her playstyle, but there were two that I could think of while writing this. The first one would probably be the best build, and basically the sole reason Tinkerer got nerfed to hell, the Machine Gun Huntress. You bring whatever perks you enjoy using the most, and then bring both Flower Babushka and Mana Grass Braid. This will give you a 20% reduction to your hatchet windup time, making you able to throw hatchets extremely quickly. This is a fun build to do, but honestly, it just makes me a bit sad for the removal of the old variant with the old Tinker, which honestly was probably a bit too powerful, but they still haven't nerfed a Mega Blink, so who even knows what they consider too powerful anymore. And the last meme build I could think of for the Huntress would be the One Shot, One Kill Huntress build. This one is more of an actual meme, but can still be pretty effective if you're extremely good with your hatchet throws. You're going to want to bring whatever your favorite three perks are, and then also Iron Maiden. For add-ons, you're going to want to bring the dreaded Iridescent Head and Deerskin Gloves. This build is probably more along the lines of what they had in mind when they designed Eerie Head, as you only have a single hatchet to use at any given time. Iron Maiden and Deerskin Gloves combined will help you get your single hatchet back 44% faster. You may still see people disconnect as soon as they see you instantly down someone with your hatchet, or you instantly down them with your hatchet, but who cares because people who DC in this game are ruining Dead by Daylight right now. Not that I'm salty or anything. And that's it for this episode of Entity Education, covering Anna, probably better known as the Huntress. Thank you as always for watching. If you want to help support this series, please do leave a like on the video, comment your favorite Huntress build, and subscribe for more in the future. If you feel like giving monetary support, once again, not required. If you really want to go out of your way to help support me, I would appreciate it. There is a link to the Patreon that I have up on the screen and down in the description. I also stream Dead by Daylight over on my Twitch channel, once again, link on the screen and in the description. If you want to follow me on Twitter, link in the things that I listed as well. Uh, also links to Scott Jund and Umberbug in the description. Follow them. They're both really good Dead by Daylight players. I am honestly not sure when they stream, though. I can't really catch their streams because I have a normal routine, unlike a lot of people who play this game, it seems. Uh, once again, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next episode covering everyone's least favorite face camper, Leatherface. Goodbye for now.